It's Juvenis. How does this work? Okay. Hello, you guys. Oh, look at all these hotties. Now I feel very. Mm. I was thinking I was going to be the sexiest in the house. What is this? What is this? <laughs> How are you guys doing? Okay, guess what? Before I start, there's a surprise for you guys in your storeroom. Don't think it's money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go now, go get it. Okay. Go get it. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Go get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. All right, guys, let's go get the surprise. Everyone? Everyone? Hey. Oh, protect, protect. Hey, 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 protect. <laughs> you want to protect me too? Yes. <laughs> I'm the soldier. <laughs> watch, watch, watch. We didn't watch. We don't trust Ify. <laughs> oh, Ify. No, I have to get all the names. Kemen. Kemen. Basi. Basi. Where is your stuff? Efe. Marvis. You're so pretty. Ah, oh, cutie. John. Look at those legs. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are so cute. You are gorgeous. Thank you. So what's what's this? What's this? Oh my God. Okay. So, settle down. So I want to ask you guys um, a question. Have you guys heard about one before? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So do you know what I, uh, I do with them? You're an ambassador. Oh, which one? What campaign? Um, girl child, I think. Poverty. Elevation. Poverty. Elevation. Poverty is sexist. Oh. Do you know what that means? No. Not really. We believe that a lot of women, globally, but especially in Africa, yeah. are not doing well. Most of them are not educated. And I'm sure most of you here are educated. That's why you're here today, you know. So this is what Poverty Sex is fighting for. I'm going to read their message to Africa and to you. So, they say, hello, housemates. And of course, hello, Africa. And indeed, hello, Nigeria. A letter to the leaders. Of course, you are leaders too. You couldn't be where you are today, you know, without a good education. But because poverty is sexist, a thousand, in fact, 130 million, 130 million girls around the world are denied basic education. Indeed, 
If the number of girls out of school were to be a country, it would be the 10th largest country in the world, bigger than Japan and even Germany. All children deserve a good education, but in the poorest countries, girls are denied it for, uh, more than boys for different reasons, you know. Yeah. Education is a vital part of our lives, and it is also very vital in moving out of poverty. Every additional year of school that a girl completes increases her future earnings, which is good for her family, her community, and the country. We cannot afford to keep on squandering about 130 million girls who could have gone to school and in actual fact this could cure diseases, was invent things, brilliant technology and all, revolutionize an industry or more industries, or simply just provide access to opportunities. <coughs> we are coming together, you and I, to advocate, uniting across the divides, that every girl should go to school and that we should make sure that they get quality education while they are at it. But we need <coughs> to all speak with one voice. And I believe, as a Motala, that as I advocate for this, that you all individually will do this moving forward because we need your voice also in the house. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. And this is a message from one, and the uh, one that I stand for, which is poverty is sexist. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself before I now throw it open to you all. Um, I don't know how many of you know my story, so I like to hear it. <laughs> so I grew up. Yes, please, Walter, how did you know? Is it a gigola in the house? I feel like you're trying to toast me. Why did you ask me? <laughs> Thank you. I'll wait for you, huh? Oh, can you hear me? Okay, I'll just project. I'm an actor. So I grew up in a family of five, you know, uh, myself and, and my two younger brothers. I lost my father at the age of 12. And um, as an only girl and the first daughter, it was very hard on me. I immediately had to start, you know, taking care of my younger ones. I was in uh, GS3, about to do my GSS exams, you know that. I went to Command Kaduna. And so I immediately, thank you, you want to get me something? To, oh my God, you guys are so... Karen. <laughs> so I immediately, you know, had to assume the role of the father and the mother to my uh, two younger brothers. So I understand the struggle, especially, bless you, especially for girls, you know. I'm not saying you boys are not very caring or very hands-on in the family, but I'm sure you understand that most girls, because of their position, even sometimes when they're the last children, you know, always feel that motherly pressure, maternal pressure to take care of um, the whole family and um, so we want to encourage you guys to you know to encourage all the women in your lives but most importantly to understand the position that women says so when we talk about you know equality or uh, women's rights it's not really to um, to, to you know demean men or to make you feel like oh you know you're not powerful you're not good enough it is that we want you to understand that for every strong woman that you build you know the stronger you are because the less you have to fight to struggle to take care of your children and you know your community and for us to have 130 million girls still out of school we are in a dilemma really we are, we are really behind schedule we need you guys to talk about this in the house and even when you leave the house now poverty is sexist is also taking advantage of march 8th which is you know international women's day um so you guys will you know need to talk about that actually the women in the house and every man who has a woman in his life well education all right, so girl education. And you know that the minute we have, bless your heart. Okay, I'm gonna drink this like it's champagne. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so the minute we have, there's no glass, so you guys don't kill yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. So the minute we have more people, you know, advocating for girls' rights and especially education, the better for all of us. We need to all understand this and attack it. You know, attack it like it is like our life depends on it because it's actually very very important and right now you all know what's going on in the world and all of that and so when you don't have education we're actually really really behind and especially in this part of the world we need to catch up and then before we start talking about you know top it up you know and all of that stuff so from uh, march 8th there's going to be some kind of letter that's already out now that we are all signing myself and some other global uh, ambassadors and celebrities around the world of which you also are so I hope they can get this to you guys in the house because you're gonna pick numbers we're gonna be picking up to 130 million wow. all right and then there's gonna be a, a video as well with Bono and so many other you know wonderful celebrities around the world and um, 
you guys are already ambassadors you know whether you win or not you are ambassadors the whole world is watching you don't think it's just Nigeria or Africa you know and you have a voice and so it will be very important for you to use your voice to speak about things that are very wonderful and you know that can move our continent uh, forward and this being I think I I hope I would have uh, made an impression enough for you to put it on your top agenda <laughs> Yeah? I want to throw it open to you. What do you guys think about uh, female education? Now, don't try to impress. Tell me, you know, like things that you, are, you know, that you are aware of or maybe personal experiences. Is there anybody in the house who's like a first daughter? You're a first daughter? I'm the only daughter. I'm the only daughter, just like me. And I have four brothers. Okay, so are you like an orphan or did you lose your father? I lost my dad when I was um, about four. <gasps> And um, I took on, like, I could relate to what you were saying. When my mom, my mom became sick, like, six years ago. S no, okay, six years ago. And then I kind of, like, took on the role of being a mother for all my brothers. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, um, first daughter, yes, of my mother. I am the first daughter. And, yes, responsibility is key. I kind of basically hold the family. So Amazing. Yes. Did, you lose, you, did you lose your father as well? My father left when I was three years old. Oh, he left? So, yes, he left. So it was... You know, it's not to undermine, you know, the place of the father <coughs> in the house, because that's extremely important. In fact, more important, it's very important to have that balanced feel. But I'm just trying to let you understand how even more, you know, <sighs> dire it is when you don't even have the father figure to help out. It's, it's not even just economical, it's actually psychological as well. And so, I don't know if any of you have heard of OYEP, or Motola Youth Empowerment Program. I'm also collaborating with, OE, uh, with one, and I'm going to be doing something for first daughters like yourself and, and myself because I understand that struggle. And um, we're building a facility for first daughters, you know, of orphaned homes or fatherless children, you know, to be able to encourage them, not just only to, you know, provide education like poverty sexes is doing or to advocate for it, but also to, to provide psychological um, help. Because I remember that when I was growing up, one of the, one of the basic problems I had was I didn't have... Um, a fatherly figure. I didn't have someone to go to. Um, my mom was there, but th there are different roles they play, you know? You know, so sometimes, and when you're the first daughter, sometimes you feel very, very alone. Mm -hmm. you, you are drawn in different, you know, directions. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you can drop out of education because you, you have so many other options. And then education seems the dullest mm -hmm. or the most... Uh, the less or the least um, important. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, you know, so it, it's very hard. And so we want to come together, put our voices together and help others um, that are in our positions. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, yes. All right. So is anybody else who wants to share anything that it, it might not be your uh, personal, yeah. but maybe something you know about someone my, else? My um, older sister, my first daughter. My mom left us when I was like two years old. So um, I have um, eight siblings. So um, she had to take care of all of us. She was in school at the time. She was at university, and there were no phone, um, cell phones. Mm -hmm. So um, she had to shuffle between school and taking care of us, being a mother and being a sister. So it was difficult because she didn't even know what role to really play. So um, at some point, we had to call her auntie. We had to call her sister. We didn't know what to call her. To call because, her. Yeah. So it was it was pretty difficult on her. I have that same yeah. issue. My yeah. younger brothers can't really relate to me yeah. that way. They're not very close because I mean, my young, my immediate younger brother. I'm older than him with like seven years. Mm -hmm. And then the one after him, which is the two of them, like two years or something. So they're very close. I'm not as close to them mm -hmm. because I was like a mother. You see, so they don't, they don't relate to me yeah. like a sister. Yeah. So they don't know sometimes if they treat me like a mom mm -hmm. or right. as a sister. Yeah. So, you know, so you have all that kind of um, misplaced identity. Mm -hmm. And it, in, a long, in a long term, it could be very, very hard on you. You mm -hmm. know, so it's nice for you to be around other people and even people who don't, have that direct experience, but that can, you know, help you to be normal mm. and let you know that you're not um, alone in that struggle. Mm. And I'm sure there are other people that you might know, you know, that maybe you never knew prior to now what they're struggling with. At least now you know. So they need your support. Sometimes they just need someone to talk to because um, they feel like the whole world is on them. And sometimes they feel like, uh, you know, they need, they need to be too much. They need to be, you know, and then you can tell them it's okay, relax, mm -hmm. relax. You can, you can just be yourself because you're normal like everybody else and everything will just take care of itself because that's what happened to me. You know, I didn't have to struggle too much. Everything just fell in place, but I thought I had to do that. You know, you think you always have to do that, but you don't have to do that. Everything will just fall in place, you know. So is there anything you want to ask me before I start to run? <laughs> uh, um, 
Are there okay. any other? Okay. okay. You're like a major source of inspiration uh, to a number of entertainers around the world who I know, that I know of. Because uh, whenever people are talking about, oh, as an actor, as an actress, you cannot hold a home together. The first name that pops up is Aomotola Jaladi. She's done it for so many years. How is she doing it? She is still married. And, you know, how do you juggle the two worlds? Ah, power it is. You have to be able to sort and place your priorities. Everything is important and it matters only to you. You have to first remember that your mental health is very important. I make myself very happy. I would not let anything make me sad or make me unwell or unhealthy because you are the first source of joy anybody comes to see me, your husband, your children, whatever. So you first have to prioritize yourself. All right? And you have to understand that you're important enough because if, you know, like in the plane, my husband's a pilot, you know, so I learned a lot from his career. And in the plane, they'll tell you when the plane is going down or something funny is happening or whatever, you put on your own oxygen mask first. Before Sometimes, don't you, think, don't you think that is selfish? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, why don't I help my child first or whatever? But because they know that if you don't put yours on and you're struggling to put on for the other person, you could actually go out of breath yourself. And so then both of you go down. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to understand that and understand that that's exactly what life is. You have to put on your own oxygen mask first. So you have to first be well. And then when you're well, you understand your priorities, your next priorities. What is, it's, it's individual, you know. What is your next priority? Is it your family? If it is your family, then be that serious. Understand that my, fa my family is more important to me than my work. But for women, because also I'm talking about women's rights, I have to be very sincere. My work is very important to me. If I had married a man that said, you can't work, there would have been a problem. So when I, when I met him, I made it very clear to him that I had to be empowered. It's not just about money, it's about your mind. Your mind plays tricks on you when you don't have money or when you don't have a job, especially as a woman and especially in Africa. So you must be empowered first. So make sure when you're meeting a spouse, you meet one or you're you know, tangling with one that understands that you need to work. It's very important. So when he understands that and he respects that, then you can also respect him and put him you know, next. You know? And then after that, then your, your, your career. But then you know, sometimes your career comes you know what I mean? Actually in entertainment. Yes. But if you marry a very understanding spouse, he understands that. I'm here today. He's at home. My son is at home. Who's um, Michael? Shout out to him. Oh. <laughs> My, My little baby. baby. Yeah. Oh, are you Michael as well? Michael. All right. So he's is at home. He's on meet him. Huh? Is that the, the producer? producer? Is Michael the, the, one, the, the one who produced No, no, no. That's MJ, Captain okay. E. Captain, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Captain E, the producer. You see, so, so he's at home now on meet him. I have not seen him, you know, mm. and all of that stuff. But my husband is taking care of him. So that's what you need. You need a spouse who understands your career, who understands that. And it, it just makes it easier. And I also want to use the opportunity to tell men, because I know I'm, I'm addressing a lot of men with this opportunity, allow your women to breathe. I think it's a thing of pride when you stand next to a powerful woman. When a man stands to a weak woman, trust me, you are weak. You are a weak brother. You are really weak. The more powerful your wife is, the more powerful you are. So don't be afraid of powerful women. When, let me tell you the secret. Let me tell you the secret. My husband trusts me, and I will never betray his trust. I will never, you know, because he trusts me. It's a psychological thing. He doesn't check up on me. He doesn't care. He doesn't have to, because I got him. Mm. So marry a woman or marry a man that got you. All right? He's not going to need to check up on you, and you shouldn't. Good Don't. Because stuff. Stuff. the minute you start to check up on her, it's a psychological thing. Then she feels like there's something to hide. So even mm. if she was never thinking about it, now you're planting it in her head that there might be something to hide. You know, so even when she gets feelings, and we're all human, we all have feelings, all right? We're all going to have feelings. Oh, oh, we're all going to have feelings, feelings, okay? So it's okay. But at the end of the day, know what you're doing mm -hmm. and always prioritize. Mm. So when it comes, always decide what is most important. What is most important? Is it my career? Is it my family? I can't, I can't judge you and I can't decide for you. But you all know what's most important to you. Always put it first. All right? Quickly, I got to go. Mine is not a question. Mine is a kind of request. I've always been looking forward to meeting you because as, as an entrepreneur, I've been doing something similar. Uh, I've marked um, International Women's Day. I marked last year. That's a pledge for parity. Right. And last year's um, War Youth Skills Day, I realized you also did stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've had passion for the girl child. That's why before I left last year, 
to the house. Mm -hmm. I and my friends were putting up something together to bridge uh, the um, gender gap in ICT. Okay. We, it's supposed to be an NGO. It's still um, in the works. In the works, yeah. So I would really, really like to do stuff with you when I leave the house. I just look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, little folks. Oh, my God. Wow. It was a wonderful time. Did you learn something? Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. So, like I said, you guys, uh, every opportunity you have in life mm -hmm. is an opportunity, no matter how small. It depends on you. Always remember that. Yeah. It depends on you. And even some people who never have opportunities make their own opportunities. How much more when you have? Don't waste it. No. Yeah. Don't waste it. Picture, picture. These are selfie yeah, sticks. They gave me this. Yeah, yes. that's oh, that's your selfie yeah. stick? Yes. They said I'll figure it out. So I guess that's it. So thank you guys for representing Africa. Oh, I have to get in somewhere. Are we good? Yeah. Everyone say one. One. We got it. 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 We got One for the road. Don't bend too much, you guys. What are we going to say? One. One cheese. One cheese. Beautiful. Why is there smoke oh. coming out of your mouth? No, we are hot. <laughs> oh, really? You guys are hot. We are smoking hot. <laughs> all right, girls. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you Bye. So much. Can I do a song for um, for you? Or... Really? Yes, I play. The door is not open, so yes. Go ahead. Ooh. Go on, go on. Oh, where's she going? To get her guitar. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm just going around circles. <laughs> My son has this thing too, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> mm. All right. Did I go wrong? Mm. Mm. Okay. Let me see your face. I will do my best. Like saying I'm my last. You're my own. Are you serious? Do. I'm in love with you, and I promise to be true. Baby, please don't do me. Cunny, cunny, baby. How do you guys know all this song? Cunny, cunny, I know. Juvenes is published bi-monthly by Pinox Communications Limited. For enquiries, event coverage or advert placement, call 0803-360-8271-0805-787-1199-0702-811-3638 or 0808-152-4499 or visit www.juvenis.punax.net Juvenis Magazine Inspiring the young at heart